just I just wanted to remind you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so let me straight away start the presentation, and then we can have uh, about uh, you know uh, maybe I'll try and finish it in half an hour, and then we can have uh, a discussion around that. So I will go super fast. So how to learn from children and what prevents us from understanding children. So this has been my constant, uh, you know, uh, exploration that, uh, that the modern adult, educated adults and children belong to two paradigms and modern educated adults completely fail to understand children. Sorry for my affirmative statements. Uh, but it is after almost 30, 35 years of, uh, uh, you know, uh, deep exploration with children. And one thing I did was I stopped reading completely. I don't read, I stopped reading completely. And so I began to observe children. And it is almost like at 30 years of observation of children in which I began to document what they do. And that were children from rural tribal areas. Uh, not our conditioned children that we have, you know, in our cities, but I lived with rural indigenous communities, illiterate communities, and I began to document children. And that gave me a completely different view of what should be life, you know, and how modern man has completely alienated himself from the real world. So that has been the, the background of my research. And one thing I want to make it very clear is that there is absolutely no villains. Everybody is a victim of his context, victims of conditioning. So please, uh, if you don't, please don't mind that if I use certain, you know, um, angry words, it's not directed towards anyone, but the very condition that we are existing in. So it is not particular to any particular person, because this is the, whoever, you know, gets trapped into a certain context, get conditioned. So that is a fundamental thing that I'm trying to talk about. So let me just, you know, uh, uh, you know, do a little bit of exploration with you. You please, uh, you know, uh, imagine the earth. You close your eyes and imagine the earth. And uh, yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, all right. Yeah. So, Andrea, maybe you can, you know, uh, unmute for just for this particular thing. So, I want to know how many people actually saw an image of the earth. Did anybody see image of the earth? Yes. Okay. Now, what is that? Todd, I can now see you. What is the size that you saw of the Earth? I saw like a round globe spinning. Uh, how much? How much? What is the size I'm asking? What would be the size of that? Is it bigger uh, than a football or smaller? Okay. 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 <laughs> anybody else can, can anybody else can tell me that what is the size that they saw? Around football, am I right? Football? For me, okay, it was okay. smaller, like oh, this size. Yeah, yeah, around that size. Now, all right, all right. Okay, okay. That's what I wanted to get. Okay. Now, just uh, you know, quickly tell me what is the color of sky. Fast, like a uh, little students, no? Tell me what is the color of sky. Blue. Don't worry, huh? Oh, color of leaf. Blue. All right, all right. Okay, okay. Now, uh, just take a look at this picture. You're seeing it. You saw it. Okay. Take a look at this picture. You saw it? Right. Okay. Now, how many of you actually read what was written there? There was something written there? The image that you saw, like these two images I showed, that how many of your eyes went directly to the letter is what I'm asking. All right. Yeah. So, you see, in most educated people, literate people, first thing they do is to read when you see something, all right? Now, and seeing demands more effort, your presence than reading. So immediately, person who is literate, read and often forget to see what is there. So let me take you through another exploration. You're seeing this image, one image, right? Second image. Third image, fourth image. 
You've had one experience of this. Am I right? You saw it. Now you read this now. What is happening? Right? Right? Right. Now, these two experiences are fundamentally two kinds of experiences. This one, I talk about learning the world. You are physiologically involved with this. Your senses are functioning here. Your body, your whole body, whole being is involved in looking at this. But when you look at this, you are learning the word. You are not seeing, you are reading. And this is a mental experience. It, only the mind is involved in this. So, uh, see, my exploration has been, what is wrong with literacy? How literacy totally damages your cognitive system, rewires it, and, and uh, makes you alienated from your body, nature, and life. Now, take a, take a look at this, you know, how many of you have traveled from, I'm sure most of you, many of you must have done it, traveled from north of a place to south of a place, am I right? If you're traveling from America to USA to Brazil, for example, take an example, or you're traveling back from Brazil to USA. Now, what is the image that, what is the imagination that gets in your head? When you travel from America to Brazil, are you going down? Are you getting that image, right? When you go, and then if you go from Brazil to North America or, or not, you go up, am I right? Isn't that the mental image that you make? Yeah. So, you know, I, with all this, I have been proving what is wrong with the modern mind. How literacy completely damages your system and nobody is aware of it. Unless you point out these small, small, simple things, we think that is the normal way. Absolutely not. So, you see, I want, what I want to tell you is that there has been, there are only two fundamental biological changes that took place in human journey from millions of years ago. Uh, there were been other sociological, other kind of changes, but two fundamentally biological changes took place. First was when we shifted from raw food to cooked food. We are, we are actually biologically designed for raw food, not for cooked food. But maybe millions of years ago, somebody ate or some group of people happened to eat cooked food and I'm sure our body must have rejected it initially. But we went on eating and I'm sure our biochemistry changed and adapted to the new uh, you know, cooked food. The, the biochemistry changed and it began to, uh, not because of taste, I'm talking about the body's biological changes. So it changed. The second shift that happened was when you shifted from orality to literacy. One thing I want to tell you is that before the printing press, orality was in the fringes. Very, very few people read books. Other very important thing is that reading was considered to be a community activity and writing was done by very few people and there were specialized people who knew how to scribe. It was not writing just like this, you know? So which needed skill like any artisan, artisanship, you know, like making pottery or any kind of activity, writing was more like a skill, only few people could do it. And so when you want to write something, you go to somebody and get it written. And the other thing is that reading was also an activity which demanded community. Reading was not individualistic. So, so what I'm trying to say is that this appearance of two-dimensionality as a cognitive realm is something that literacy brought in. So one statement I always make is literates learn the word, illiterates learn the world. Literates learn the container, illiterates learn the content. We are continuously dealing with description. That was somebody's third rate description. You know, because he has read another book that they, they, they have read another book. So it's a continuation of, you know, books, 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 books. So the package is itself is mistaken as a product. Now, the most important aspect is that literates are shaped by the word because our whole cognitive system, cog neural network is all uh, completely controlled by what we experience. This is not in our control at all, especially in childhood. Whatever happens till the first 12 years forms your 
uh, foundation for learning, foundation for being. I would call it being, not just learning. Learning is a fragmented activity that, you know, a fragmented idea that modernity has brought in. There is nothing called learning in that sense, actually. It's, we, are, we are shaping and forming ourselves. So literates knowledge transferred through language. This is what they believe, you know, in the realm of the mind. You're constantly in the realm of the mind that somebody will tell you some theory and then you think about it. You know, all kinds of graphs and all kinds of things are flown around and you use your mind and then you create, a, create an illusion that you've understood it. Yeah, illiterates, knowledge is recreated and verified in experience. There's a clear distinction between what is information and knowledge in, in, in illiterates. Because for them, knowledge is only when you experience it. Till then it is an information. So, so what is to be really understood is what is understanding, you know? Where, because we, the literates, use conscious reasoning. And I, I what I say is that Conscious reasoning short circuits comprehension. We create a myth that you have understood. Understanding happens in the realm of language and mind. For illiterates, understanding happens in the realm of experience itself. And it's, it happens. You don't have to make, you don't have to make an effort. So I'm just taking you through, you know, just few, uh, what you call that, uh, you know, Ex, you know, uh, some distinction between these two. The condition for learning in illiterates is unknown. Whereas for literates, it is known because you know what we are doing is anyway, what is read, read you know, you, we are reading only. And content is contextual, the real. And uh, for, for the literates, it is book authority. Oh, what is... Yeah, okay. Um, and for literates, it is uh, illiterates, it is present, absent. Anyway, I think, you know, it's better that we, I, you know, I'll put it all fully. And as we record it, it's better that you come back to this later. But here I have done a very clear uh, study of what is the fundamental difference between illiterates cognitive system and literate cognitive system. So I take from what is the content to the last bit of how do we understand it? And then I look at what is memory, what is, and you know, one very important thing that I want to tell you is that none of this requires you to go, look through the brain. All whatever I'm telling is verifiable if you're observing. That's all you need to do. You need to stop reading all kinds of theories that people make, just observe your child. That's all what we need to do to understand how learning actually happens because life is learning. It is not we who are learning. Everything in life is learning. There's not one thing that is not learning. Of course, of course, the educated people have stopped learning because they don't know what is learning. Now, what is to be clearly understood is how does the formation of the mind take place? You know, what is the processing system that, uh, you know, whether it should be creative and analytic. What we have, educated have is analytic. There's nothing called creativity in there. Uh, you know, of course, we are very good in appropriating words, so we give meanings left, right, and center. There are two types of languages. One language is experiential language, and the other is mental language. You know, because it is uh, we mistaking we appropriately or uh, you know we call it uh, uh, conceptual and abstract, but it is not true at all. We are we actually have a mental language and not abstract or conceptual. Because concept and abstraction actually takes place in a di different uh, process altogether. And this language is, uh, modern language is eye-centric, I am the doer, I burned my finger, for example, we say, I, I made this, I did that, I did that, you know? But you look at any of the oral languages, in this, it is happening-centered language, I'm part of the happening. My so they would say, my hand got burned. I did not burn my finger. So it is in the process that things happen. 
So this is very clear from any indigenous language you take, any oral language you take. These languages are all process centric, whereas modernity has eye centric and product centric. And of course, there are more nouns. We are continuously making nouns, whereas indigenous languages are uh, because you know the playfulness as a quality now it is understood as play as an activity as a noun. Yeah? So it's actually very interesting to go through the language of modernity. You will clearly see linearity, fragmentation, every problem that we talk about you can very clearly see in the language of modernity. So I what I call as paradigms of being, one paradigm is experiential paradigm where body and senses are obviously being part of it. And the, in the mental paradigm of being, which is the modern paradigm, it is mind, language, reason, you know, these kind of uh, everything related to mind. See, the, the issue is that it impacts children like anything. So how literacy impacted children was that with the, with the coming of literacy from the 14th uh, century, Children became dependent on adults to understand the world, but that is a myth that was created. You, somebody has to teach the child how to read, only after that, they will be able to understand the world. So child became completely uh, dependent, or it was made like that. It's not that children are word dependent anytime, but we create a condition that they become dependent. See, if you don't uh, you know, interfere, they will naturally use their senses and understand the world. It is only we confuse them by telling them that, no, it is through reading that you have to understand the world. Then you begin literacy and th their senses are then forever, I mean, it's forever lost actually. That's actually the fact. Because there is, uh, you know, research in uh, Germany and all that, where, uh, you know, there is an anatomical chain that happens when you get into literacy. In fact, you create something called letterbox and you create a, a system replacing the original system of the senses. So the sensory, physiological sensory experience is replaced by mental uh, activity of the senses, you know? So learning from children, you know, I just, I want to just show you this video. Just take a look at this video. All right, don't worry. I, I just wanted to show you, you know. So what, what did you actually see there? You don't have to answer, but you know, spend a minute and think, what did you actually see? All right, now, so how children learn? So my actually research has been that, what, do, what does that actually children do to understand the world? You know, and it, it, it's actually 100%, uh, you know, uh, different from what West has been promoting as what children do and you know what they learn because see within the realm of the West children they, we have fragmented all activities into learning play art work you know entertainment these are all fragmented activities given special time for that but if you don't in the you know fragment the world there's only one activity that children are doing they are just trying to make sense of the world that's all it is done playfully and it is done in a manner that we, we confuse that with art and, you know, learning and play and work and all that. So, and their process is that they experience the whole and explore the parts. You know, I don't think I will have time today to share uh, my, my whole research, but it is a completely 100% uh, you know, different from what you must have been hearing about how children learn and things like that. 100% because all the modern research is one, it is based on how to teach children. Second, because there's an authority that is already established and it is based on language. And what my research has been that I just documented what children did spontaneously. And I was able to, from that, I was able to understand that there is a clear system given by life to understand the world. And, uh, and so the first thing that happens is that their senses, their tools, and qualities are developed in the process of engaging with the world. You know, senses are the tools for learning. But all of our modern education is, there is no sense at all participating. 
and it is through knowledge creation that learning happens and and everybody so that's why i purposely use the word you know autonomy and originality because every living being is born original and <laughs> uh, you know uh, retain when we are authentically engaged in creation of knowledge so take a look at this video you know many people see this kind of videos but pass it over you know this they make you know they just laugh and then that's it but look at it very very carefully and this is what i did i began to observe every activity that children do absolutely seriously i did not just you know gloss it over i took time to revisit every time i you know i must have seen it 100 times every activity and i have, as i told you i have thousands of videos and images of what children do and it became very clear that there is a, a you know system that is happening so you know so uh, you, you can you know please read actually something is happening with the screen i am not able to read it so you please go through this the first thing i am talking about is what is the natural condition the child is engaging with the unknown the child is engaging with the real world and developmental process natural processes are at work learning process knowledge creation there is also what what we can call as intuitive mathematical calculation happening the child is understanding now all this understanding is happening at implicit level see simply like this that all of you have learned mother tongue without any help along with learning the mother tongue you also imbibe grammar of each of whatever you learn so grammar is actually the science of language which you know otherwise you won't be able to speak similarly every activity a child does is because in they have imbibed internalized the laws of nature which is what you know science is all about actually and obviously intelligence has to do with this creativity has to do with this it is not by reading and thinking you know that your intelligence can you know you, your only permutation doing permutation and combination of what is read there is nothing original about that so the first thing that education the literacy kills is any possibility of being original and of course the modern uh, you know paradigm of uh, citing people and all that you know that peer review and all that kind of nonsense completely kills any possibility of anybody saying anything original so i will i will you know go through this fast so this is what i have told now this whole thing is fragmented into different different uh, you know categories so what you actually just now saw uh, that ah uh, uh, yeah so take a look at this actually this is the crux of learning the crux of learning is that the child finds similarity and differences and that is how our senses can function our senses function by understanding similarity and differences you you remember you know recollect first time when you ate, ate mango you remember that you know maybe 10 days later you ate second time mango you remember that you know that senses it's not a conscious activity so it's a body the senses are actually constantly categorizing information finding similarity finding differences this is the crux of this so what you will learn is uh, form function process material structure this is what the world is this is precisely what the world is so you know it, it's actually about the color shape sensation texture a whole body without our choice is doing it this you know so this whole idea about choosing what to learn is a purely a mental construct actually i know this is going to be quite a challenging time for, you know but i i can't help it i have to you know so this is what you know playfulness is the quality of the child now what is happening is that modern adults are going around playing thinking that that will make them playful absolutely no any activity it's actually a, it's a freedom of the mind that is what playfulness is all about it is not physical play that you need to reenact how do you how are you how much are you free here that is what is playfulness is all about 
So I'll give you a fantastic example of how a child creates knowledge. First time this child ate, uh, no, he was eating a uh, coconut piece. He took a bite and immediately he remembered the bull's, uh, you know, the horn of the bull. He immediately told that, you know, it's looking like a bull. Immediately then he remembered the, what you call that, the half moon. So that uh, comparing similar forms, and actually this is the principle of toy making that children do. So the moment you give a toy to a child, you are killing the natural process of how a child understands the world. And plays actually, another thing is, another plays that it's reenactment of experience by recreating and reliving experiences. This is actually a form of reflection. And toy is the object that, that are used as props in the process of reenactment. Now, I, I'm telling this after, after observing thousands and thousands of videos and images. You see, for this, you know, that particular object became her child, it became her bus, she used it for sitting, same object. So there is nothing called a toy in a child's mind. Every object is a potential toy and every activity is, a pot, you know, is playful. So that way, ready-made toys are more dangerous than schools, you know, and the biggest harm that has been done by modernity is this Barbie dolls, you know, because there is clearly a stage, exactly the way a children learn to walk or learn to talk. There are stages in which, you know, clearly there is a pros, you know, chain that happens exactly like this. There is stages in play also. So to, see, uh, doll making, there is no doll making. Actually, they are reenacting their experience of being fed by their mother. So the, the stages in the natural childhood where the child engages with the child is only in the initial phase. In the first four, five, six years is when the child play, uh, you know, as a mother. That's actually, that's what the child is doing. So every activity a child does is to re-experience what they've experienced and learn that, imbibe that. And to so toy, everything is a process actually. Knowing is a process. There is nothing about knowledge, fixed knowledge. It's a continuous evolving thing as you experience more and more, you know, in, in that sense, uh, you know, knowledge is actually a byproduct. So modern language is fragmented, compartmentalized, hierarchical, appropriate meanings, the, the afterthoughts, like we say, na, include, let's include children in our thing, you know? So this inclusion, we think about after excluding them. So this whole idea of inclusion comes from, for example, sustainability. I don't think indigenous communities ever, they don't even have that word. So these are the words that fragmented, you know, uh, hierarchical appropriation of meanings. Every word is appropriated to suit their, you know, convenience. So, uh, you see, this is a very uh, important thing that I've come across, what is called as a cognitive foundation. This, what I'm showing you is natural cognitive foundation in which sensory input is the first thing. Then you have, uh, you have connecting sensory input with words and then inferential inputs, you know, so uh, there is a clear cut process of formation of cognitive foundation. This is, is the basis of learning to understanding further, you know, but what happens is that I'll give you a fantastic example in this case, you know, in which, uh, let me take the next one. Yeah, sorry. So the, the example I want to tell you one is this, that the input is, you know, individual items like this, they, they are sensory inputs. They're not word inputs. See, thank God in the first one and a half years, children do not understand one word you say. All the words you say are meaningless to the child. They only hear the sound. So in the first one and a half years, they are rooted, they are completely immersed in the sound, the, the visual thing, the texture, the, the smell, everything. And they, this is what is formed as the, that becomes the first uh, foundation of the, you know, first layer of the foundation. And of course, they're constantly seeing other things, you know, where the mango is, you know, uh, uh, the mango tree, then the stages. 
so it's not just one thing now there's a whole life uh, everything about mango and other things they are seeing they are seeing a you know parrot eating a, what you call that mango a squirrel and then you know this is what is called an inference you know you have seen somebody you now you know that someone has come and eaten you know? i'm just giving an example of what is the this complex process that happens within us without any effort and for the foundation of the literates we completely deny the sensory you know inputs and start bombarding with words and meanings so there is a meaninglessness that is primarily uh, in the realm of literates because every word they they co-opt they 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 you know make their own meaning with that so it's a whole story of a uh, mind language construction of ideas you know and actually this is what is actually totally biased and totally subjective so i will quickly finish with this because i think the time is almost getting over paradox of education is this that uh, you know there is hardly any difference between machine you know machine learning and human learning in the modern context inputs and then later measurement of the output that's all you know so now there is a twist in the story that they will continue to give inputs to the human child but they want artificial intelligence now an intelligent machine you know in which uh, you know the ai will assist the teacher you know but primarily this is also top down approach and what i want to show you is that so machine learning is the way we teach children and artificial intelligence enabling machines to learn on their own so this is the fundamental paradox of modernity and uh, let me just show you some interesting video on this hey, can can you please uh, will i be able to share the sound uh, absolutely just give me a minute let me just see if i can when you share please uh just pay attention to a very little um dot yeah. at the end yeah yeah i i mean i've i've done it so now please look at this you know the next one yeah listen to one can one. look at the story of computer science and think we have at least three ages one is the age of programmers the in the age of programmers you have to pay very smart people quite a lot of money to make uh, some system behave in an intelligent way we are now in the age of labelers in which you pay a lot of people not much money in order to label data and both of them uh, especially this one is and going to infinity you know number of label data going to infinity but of course uh, you know children don't don't have uh, big data um we really would like to to be able to show one car and one plane to a child like we do for a child and then they're able immediately to generalize very well so our idea is i'm going to one and to have computers that learn like children from experience so this is the point i want to make you know that now there is research happening in all of the main universities to to learn how children learn you know so that they can make intelligent machines but their research is wrong primarily because they are again putting children into lab like environments and and asking them to do certain things they are not learning children from their natural environments it's like this if you want to study dogs you have four options you can read books and do your phd on that which is what many people do or you can you know you can study your pet dog and understand what dog is all about third option is that you can study the dog in the street but the best option would be go to the jungle find you know and study the dog there because that is the most natural environment that that is what the dog will do even the second one is fine because their cognitive system is not conditioned they, they are trained the problem today is that most of the understanding of children actually comes from the so called developed world where children are conditioned right from the day one they are they are thought of as people incapable they are you know treated like uh, uh, you know every time help is offered you see it's 
unbelievable that everyone talks about training the child. And the, the height of this is that they are even training mindfulness to children, which is, I think, the most absurd idea that the modernity has invented. Because the child are mindful as they are. It is the adults who, you know, so what I'm feeling, finding is that adults have nothing else to do. So they find this little, you know, uh, helpless children and dump all their nonsense onto children. This is what is happening in the name of education, you know. All your experiments are nothing but violence against children and life, actually. Leave them alone, learn from them. That is your only choice. If you really want to understand the crisis of modern humans, the only choice is to learn from children, drop your ideas from the mind, take input from the senses and learn. So I think we need to completely reimagine childhood. And actually this is my, and my invitation is this, to, to whoever is interested, to establish a cognitive lab. The way we study cells to understand life, we need to study children to understand human beings, you know? And the only way is to document, 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 of course in their spontaneity, what they do in spontaneous things and come together as a collective being, as a, cooperative effort by everyone. See, today what is happening is that the experts have completely taken over everything. You have to depend on an expert to understand. Even parenting has become, you know, expert dependent. And what education has done is that it has completely killed our ability to observe, to learn on our own. And if there is any possibility, any reclaiming that is to be required, is your ability to learn using your senses, not by reading another 10,000 books. Burn down the books, start using your senses. That, that, I think that is the only way that, you know, you can read much later <clears throat> after you have understood life directly, not prior to that. Otherwise, not, you're just becoming second-hand citizens, second-hand clones, not citizens, sorry, clones, and just intellectual parasites. This is what modernity produces, you know? So this is my, you know, uh, thing and uh, sorry for being very, very fast. So this is uh, my number and all that in case. Yeah, so. Uh, we still have a couple of minutes. Should we go into uh, questions, you know, what your Yeah, question? yeah, yeah. Uh, see, I won't be able to read from the chat, so please don't, you know. Yeah, yeah, please. Shout Can you hear yes. me? Because it's very loud. Are you able to hear me? Yes, yes, yes. OK. And um, thank you so much for that interesting presentation. I have a question for you. Yes, um, yeah. I assume you are aware of Montessori education, which in my understanding is about engaging the child with the environment. It's based on observation, all of that. No, what are your thoughts about No, no, no. You see, the moment you create a method, you have not understood child. Montessori method is against the nature. See, children do not need to be put inside a cubicle called school, you know? They need to understand the real world without the assistance of Montessori and people like me. They don't need any assistance because life has already given them equipment to understand the real world. So, so that's why I have a problem with Montessori has understood children to some extent, to a large extent, I would say. But the moment she turned it into a method to teach, she has completely killed it. And, you know, see, knowledge creation is something that we need to uh, deeply inquire uh, you know, that is what I've been doing now. My next phase of my exploration is how to, uh, you know, bring out implicit knowledge that we already have into, into explicit. For example, you know, implicit knowledge of grammar is already inside us. What is the process by reflecting on how we speak? How am I able to, you know, articulate the knowledge that I already have? So, so I think the process has to be very, very different when we want to, even if you want to create, you know, I don't want to think of schools and all that, but suppose we want to delve into knowledge a little bit more, th there has to be a different way of metacognition. Metacognition means co understanding, being aware of what you already know and how do we articulate it. Yeah. Hi, Dai. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I've 
I thought I was pretty radical about looking at how to learn and teach kids, but you, you've taken it to another level, sir. So I, I just want to ask you a question. Have you read in, uh, what do you think of the post-human uh, 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 child uh, philosophy or, or concept? What I couldn't hear you. Uh, have you have you read any of the post-humanist uh, uh, children concept? What do you think about that? No, no, I, I don't read at all, you know. See, I, what I find oh, is that okay. most of these are ideas created by the mind. It is not through observation, people are telling. They're making up a lot of stories around, you know. So I abstain from, you know, I think it's a waste of time to read, you know, even this very idea of post-human and all that. Now, it's all the mental constructs. There is only one, uh, you know, division I make of, uh, you know, modernity. It's all mental. Whether it is modern, post-modern, pre-modern, post-human, everything is nothing but creation of the mind. I would abstain from engaging with that and just use my senses and, you know, understand the world. The world is being open to me just like that, you know. So why should I read a book and, you know, get trapped by their theories, all kinds of theories that people make? Yeah. No, and, and I agree with you. I just think that there, there's a large world of academic who've been following the books. And, and because I've read the post-human uh, and especially post-humanist child, I was able to understand you more quickly. I mean, I wish we all had the time to spend the next 20 years or you, uh, years you spend without reading books and just observing children. But I think sometimes the construct of reading something, so they get to a point to understand and then uh, yeah. when to hear your passion and to hear your intention, it really helps us bit flip us there. Like, okay, yes, yeah. okay. I understand it and here you actually observed it. So I just yeah. thought that it might be a good, uh, a bit of information for people to bridge from where you're at, which is pretty pretty far out there uh, to yeah. where we're at, which is we're still no, dealing the, the, with the nuts and bolts of, of academia or education or books. <laughs> yeah, you see, the problem is that the more we uh, take in information through the mind, the mind will keep on trapping you. One day we have to realize that it is not through mind that we should be understanding the world. You see, there are two, three fundamental issues that we need to look at. One is that understanding is something that happens to you. It's not something that you have to do. The moment you are doing, then it is, ego is functioning and you are, it is happening in the mind. So, so when I'm telling you, there is something that immediately clicked. It's not because you thought about it. The moment you think about something, you're already creating a problem in understanding. Because understanding is choiceless and it is very smooth, you know. So if and you really you want to, that, yeah, sorry. And you don't think there's a balance of both? Uh, no, no, of no, both? no it, it, see, I, what I'm telling is balance of both. I'm telling that your cognitive foundation should be sensory and then you can read. See, I have no problem in reading critically. See, now we have a word called critical thinking. Am I right? There is nothing. No, 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 that, no, you can clarify right there. I'm with you. Yeah. It there, is both. There is no criti yes, there is no critical thinking in modernity because everybody is criti criti making critique by reading 10,000 books. You can be critical only if you experientially know what you're talking about. Yeah. So to me, I, I, I continuously look at all the work that people are doing. I'm aware of uh, I, you know, many people actually in the, in the modern sense, but I, I don't spend time reading. I hear them to YouTube. That's what I prefer. I listen to them. And I realized, no, no, this is another story they are making. So I skip it. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I was the first one yes, in your please, workshop. Uh, and I spent the first dress, five I'm minutes. Sorry, I, just, no, I just my. Next I was person, the first one in your work. I was the first one in your workshop. Yeah, yeah. And I spent the, first... hand up, no? the blue dress. I'm sorry, I'm not able to read right now. Yeah, uh, Marsha. Yeah, Marsha, please. Yeah. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, sir, yes. I have two questions. One is, like you said, that how uh, should an ideal uh, routine of a child look where yeah, tell me, tell me. Sorry, my, can provide uh, them? Tell me. Yeah. That, so I'm a, I have a question. How as we as parents yeah. uh, facilitate their natural? I mean, I, you said it's the only Yeah, 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 yeah I understood. Varsha, facilitate your learning first. Don't worry about children. If you See, they are going to imitate you. And if you are going to help them out, they are going to become dependent. You mm -hmm. see, find out some passion that you have in life. 
Hmm. And don't worry about them. Worry about you. Okay. You are the one who is damaged. Hmm. Hmm. You know, you Got change it. your lifestyle. Become hmm. learn to be. See, every morning go and look at the mirror and tell, "I'm a fake. I'm I'm inauthentic." Hmm. Trouble yourself. Hmm. See, we don't want to trouble ourselves. This is a problem. We hmm. want to have a comfort zone, and then that's not going to change actually. Right, Katie. Got it. And so, uh, I have one more question. Yeah, yeah, we, how we, can, see. yeah, fast. Uh, how can we explain the entire family and get them on the same page that they don't need? That is all. Over? See, it's no, no, no. That's not all going to be very difficult. I have been trying to tell this to so many people. Nobody even wants to listen. So forget about it. Forget about it. you know. You do what is possible, and okay. gather strength in that. That's why I'm able to survive. Yeah, gather strength in your your you know you be committed that's all what you can do others may follow may not follow right katie it's following from varsha's question if you're focusing on yourself to then impact and facilitate your child's upbringing how can you protect them when you live in a developed western world where you yeah, aren't with yeah. them a hundred percent of the time you can't control everything yeah how do you navigate that no, it is actually, see, frankly, we have created a completely anti-life, anti-child world. This is the fact of, of, the, of the situation. Because you see, the, see I, what I constantly say is that there is nothing called culture in modernity. Culture actually are three aspects is what forms culture. When there is authentic creation of knowledge of the context, if that is not there, there is nothing called culture. It's completely missing in our in, in the modern sense because we are all intellectually uh, you know dependent on somebody's knowledge but that is not natural at all uh, you see Katie, it is very difficult right even in india it's not just the case of developed world almost everywhere because we are now living in the you know in the ambience of lying all the time you know you open a open the video i mean uh, television you constantly hear lies all the time so the ambient condition is against life because the nature of the child is to trust everything. That's the nature of the child. Child doesn't understand what is lie. They are in truth. They trust life. But the whole modern world is against the child because it's constantly cheating the child. Because now the advertisers have realized that it is very easy to cheat the child. They are making them buy all kinds of things which are not required. So the modern condition, you see, not only that, the, our, as, as everybody knows that in our brain is completely fragile and it, it absorbs what it experiences. So the, uh, not only the reading literacy, but also digital is even worse than, uh, you know, uh, for the brain development. The play that they're promoting, the uh, all kinds of digital tools that they are promoting for children are absolutely harmful. But of course, they will not talk about it because it, it you know, uh, what I say doesn't make any money. But what they say makes money, you know? So hardly, uh, you know, the, you know, there won't be any exploration on that. But, you know, of course, there are, uh, you know, few things that we can do if we become extremely conscious of certain things, you know? Uh, and, and one is, see, what the, I do a workshop called Do Nothing Parenting Workshop, where, Few things I tell them. Number one, of course, you see, when I adopted a child, I took three decisions. Never say no to her. Always follow her. Let her decide. Third is never lie to her. You know, three decisions I took. Now, in the modern concept, these are going to be difficult because if you say no, you cannot say no to most conditions are such that, you know, you have to say no. So in the modern context, what I've been telling them was that please avoid as much toys as possible. If there are no toys, that will be very good. And don't create separate space for children. Children's space is our space. There's, our space is their space. You know? So they are free to move around anywhere. Our problem is that we need our space. You see, the whole idea of privacy is anti-child. Children don't understand privacy. The whole world belongs to them. At least their house should belong to them. So don't create a children's room and make all silly toys there, you know, make all kinds of silly drawings and all that no see because i'm telling silly silly because children's ability is to understand the real world so why are we miniaturizing and cartoonizing everything they should be 
actually engaging with the real world, you know, the sun, the moon, everything that is there, you know, trees and all that. Why see a drawing in the in the in her room? I don't think that is required at all, you know. So, you know, it's the thing is that I have to tell you one thing that I am doing this with the spirit of next thousand years, something should happen. Because the destruction that we have done is so immense. And destruction is continue to happen because every research that is happening in the West is anti-child, every research. So, and they are very powerful, so powerful that, you know, I, I don't think anybody else would have heard my words, you know. Even though what I'm telling is absolute common sense, you don't need any machines to understand the brain or anything. Observe a child, that's all what you need to do. And in fact, you know, later when, if anybody is interested, you can connect with me and I can, you know, I will share the, all the other work that my documentation, you know. So, yeah. Okay. Well, well one, one important thing I want to tell you is that don't feel depressed. If I, I am depressed, I wouldn't have done anything. I'm hoping, you know, my hope is thousand years hope. Don't worry about today, tomorrow and all that. It's a thousand year hope. We have to work that in ten, thousand years, life should change. And maybe tomorrow it might change. I'm not against that. But work as if, you know, that, that you have to put in all your effort, even though things are so difficult, you know? Thank mm -hmm. you.